Good morning, folks. Today we discuss cosmic rays, solar wind, ice on Mars, supernova, shocking shrimp, and solar dynamics. We're starting with our star as well over at spaceweathernews.com. Still no solar flares, no significant CMEs. You can see that coronal cavity on the left side near the equator that we looked at yesterday in 211 angstroms. The tiny umbral group masquerading across the disk as a large sunspot has been able to put on the Superman costume of large umbral magnetic field loops, but hasn't yet lifted off to fly. It's departing, decaying, and we move on to look at solar wind. Still no definitive coronal hole stream, but that spike and slightly higher readings during the midnight UTC hours may actually be explained by the coronal hole missing Earth. It was confined to the polar region as you see here in the archive footage from April 23rd. Often we see a stream that just misses, we can get weird density and speed readings. Have you ever felt your car rock back and forth because another car sped by quickly, creating that wave of air pressure? Same magnetohydrodynamic activity can apply to the solar wind if a strong, speedy stream just brushes by in a near miss. Looking at the last 24 hours of 211 angstroms, we see the coronal hole shows some patchy areas behind the sunspot, but they are too sparse to be proper coronal holes. Going next to cosmic rays, Mexico City once again. It was 24 hours after the disaster prediction app's notification about record background levels that we saw a short-term spike even higher, brief though it was. The aim today, however, is to show how the geomagnetic storm we got just after that, a few days ago, took us back down a notch. Space weather decreases cosmic rays, lack of space weather, and cosmic rays will rise. Key anti-relationship to understand there. Up next, the very first low-altitude orbit shot from ExoMars. Make no mistake, they say the white stuff on the rim of the crater close up here is indeed water ice. Much more coming from them in the weeks ahead. Up next, we're talking about supernova. This is the kind of system we often don't know is binary until one of the partners blows their top. New results from the HST show a survivor to a supernova scientist first saw in 2001, an amazing explosion 40 million years ago that we just got to witness at the start of the millennium. This is considered important because it's the first time we have seen the process from flash to survivor, and it represents the best actual observations that a double star system can go nova with one member surviving. Up next, shrimp, brine shrimp tiny little things, but aggregating into large groups in the ocean might be able to affect currents, major currents. To the dismay of the researchers, laboratory experiments demonstrated considerable modulation over the motion of the water. They say it was to a shocking degree of flow, and it is strong enough to affect the oceans and the global climate. Lastly, on the news front, an incredible paper claims that standard dynamo models are strongly challenged by new observations of a rotationally oscillating magnetic pattern, indicating that the magnetic axis and surface rotational axes of our sun are not aligned. Fascinating. A quick call with Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille this week indicated he'd be willing to make the journey out to Albuquerque for his third conference appearance. More info in the coming weeks, but I knew some of you would want to know that one. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 425 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.